This is not sponsored. This is my own money. And I can tell you right now, like this just feels like I don't have anything on my skin. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. Today I'm doing a full face of first impressions, but there is a star of this show and it is the foundation I am wearing. I've had this on now. I filmed another video. I've had this on for about two hours and it literally looks like it did when I first put it on, if not better. I am completely shook, utterly amazed. All of the words that are just like, wow, that is what I'm feeling right now. I cannot wait to tell you about it, but before I do, if you're new, I hope you decide to join the family by hitting that subscribe button and turning on your notification bell so you know every time I upload. I do a lot of beauty content, reviews, tutorials, makeup, hair, nails, anything related to beauty with a little bit of fitness sprinkled in. That is what I am into and I love sharing it with you guys. So I would love to have you be a part of the family. I will not keep you waiting. If you want to know what I have on my face, you probably saw it in the thumbnail because I could not keep it a secret. Stay tuned and keep on watching. All right, so we're going to jump straight in with today's video. Now, I haven't done a foundation review in a while. I don't even remember the last one. And I feel like this is one of my most viewed videos, like this type of content. So I figured I would jump back in, start with a foundation review, but then also do some other products that are new to me. I want to talk about this. Y'all have seen this all over YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. This is the Tear Tear Mask Fit Red Cushion Mask Shield Enriched Coverage Foundation. Now this is a cushion foundation, which I don't know if I've ever even tried a cushion foundation. So I have no idea about the formula. I saw Tati do a instagram reel on this foundation and i was like okay what is this she's talking about it's budge proof she wore it in texas humidity and all these things and of course you know with korean beauty they do not have a good shade range for darker skin tones we know this they are supposed to be expanding but i got mine on amazon and i'm double checking my order because i think this is originally like 30 dollars or something like that but right now, yeah, so it's $40 actually. But right now, as of today is June 9th, it is showing for $25 plus a 30% off coupon. So I will have it linked in the description box, but also on Amazon, I believe, did I get the darkest shade? I did. So 43N is the shade that I picked up and it is currently the darkest shade that they have on Amazon. They do have darker shades on their website, but this was the fastest way for me to get it. So I was like, let me just see. I think it'll work, but it says it's deep cocoa, but the end made me feel like it's neutral, which is what I tend to like. So we'll go from there. Now I am going to use this. It says it's brightening and anti-wrinkle, prevent smudging of makeup in the mask, 24 hours makeup persistence in the mask, and 72 hours makeup persistence. So, interesting. Wait, what's the star? Oh, it says completed a clinical trial test applicable only for 21 in ivory. So does that mean it doesn't apply for any of the other shades? That would be kind of weird. But it says it's an adhering cushion foundation that keeps makeup fresh for long hours with a lightweight powder and skincare substance. So it just says take an appropriate amount with the puff and thinly spread into the skin using a gentle tapping motion. Now I will tell y'all, I did try this already. I couldn't help it. I wore it to the gym. I didn't do anything that it said. I wore it with a, did I wear a primer? I did not wear a primer and I'm not gonna wear a primer today. Um, I think this comes in 20 shades maybe but I did not wear this with a primer and I wore it to the gym. I will say that I do feel like it did not transfer as much as some of my other foundations, but that's also the first time I wore a foundation without a primer in a really, really long time. And then I have some other products here that I haven't worn yet that I'm just gonna throw on to complete the look 
and then I'm going to do a wear test. It is currently 10, 10. So I should be able to get a good seven, nine, 10 hour wear out of this maybe, but I'm going to check in with you guys throughout the day. So we're going to jump right into applying this. I also did not use the puff. This is what the packaging looks like. It's super cute, super compact. I am going to be traveling soon and I'm probably going to bring this foundation with me because the shade is a decent match. But this is what it looks like on the inside. This did have a cover that you had to peel back to keep this moist. I'm going to use the sponge on one side and then a brush on the other side just so if you have a preference you can see. I'm just going to go ahead and start. I'm going to dip this in here. And I, like I said, I have not applied this this way, so I have no idea, but this is what it looks like on the sponge. Skin, again, I don't have primer on. I have a mattifying moisturizer on, and we're just going to see what happens. So we're just going to pat like it says. We're just going to do one side of the face so you can see it definitely gives coverage. It does look a little dark for my skin tone, but we all know that is how I like to wear my foundation. So I feel like this is a pretty good match for me. I do feel like this covered my dark spots really well. And it is a semi matte finish. It is not completely matte. So... I don't know if I'm going to powder. I don't normally powder unless I'm trying to do like stay matte all day like for a competition or something. But I think the coverage on that looks so good. So this is my face without it. Can we just take a minute to see? I feel like my dark spots are getting so much better. I've been being really diligent about my skincare and using all my products that are supposed to help fading them and I just feel like it is actually working. So this is what one pass looks like with the sponge. I think this applied really well with the sponge to be honest. When I used my brush the other day it applied well too but I also wasn't trying to get full coverage because I don't wear full coverage going to the gym. So let's take a brush. I'm going to use this Morphe E63 brush. Love this brush and just see how it applies with this. And I'm just going to dip it straight into the compact. Now I will say, I don't know if I just had more, maybe I need to push harder. Um, just off the initial application, I will say that I feel like the sponge picked up better and applied the product better. So I feel like it spread better on application than it's doing with this brush. And it does say pat, don't swipe. I have a bad habit of swiping because in my head, I'm like, you gotta buff it into the skin, but that is not what this says to do. This feels so light. Like, I don't feel like I have anything on my skin at all. So this is the coverage with the sponge, and then this is the coverage with the brush, which I feel like, I do feel like this has a little more coverage on this side. It looks darker on this side, which to me means I have more product. But this side, I feel like I could get away with this side and I don't really need as much coverage. Like that's still covered really, really well. So I feel like that's enough. And I feel like this was fast. Like it did not take a lot of effort to get it to feel like it is blended into the skin. I do feel like it kind of blurred a little bit too. Interesting. Tell me what y'all think. I know the color range is horrible, but just based, if you can find it in your shade, check their website too. If you can find it in your, sh in your shade, would you pick this up? All right, so we're gonna move on to the rest of the face. I do have a new concealer. This is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Anti-Creasing Concealer. It says it's smoothing and blurring and undetectable. I, I've tried this. I don't remember how I felt about it, so I thought this would be the perfect time to try it. 
I picked this up from the Makeup Forever website in the shade 30 3.6 N. Again, another neutral. I remember feeling like this was going to be too light, which might work out for this because of how whew, <laughs> how dark the foundation is. Um, yeah, so we're just going to go in with this and see. I'm not trying to do too, too much of a face today because I really want the focus to be on this foundation. So I'm going to take my concealer brush. I always just pat where I want to keep the most coverage. And then I take my foundation brush or a sponge and just kind of blend out around the edges. Now I will say I can tell, I'm going to put some more on my forehead just because I want it to be a little brighter. I do feel like my forehead wrinkles aren't showing as bad. I don't know if you guys can tell that. I feel like I can usually tell with the foundation already that it's sinking, but I don't feel like this is doing that. Like this is literally dried down and it's staying. So we're off to a good start with that. I'm just going to continue to blend this out. I feel like it's blending well. I just don't feel like I'm getting the normal amount of coverage that I do from some of my other concealers that I like. So I feel like between that and how it's drying down, I may end up having to use more of this than I normally do with some of my others. And I'm going to go ahead and set my forehead real quick so it doesn't wrinkle. I don't know if I've used this on camera before. I don't think I've used this shade. This is the one size beauty sweet honey setting powder. I have a travel size of this in the translucent shade in my makeup bag. So that is how much I can tell you right now. I love this. I'm so used to using like transparent or not transparent, <laughs> translucent powders that when it's a yellow or a honey, I'm always worried that it's not going to be enough. Oh yeah, that's going to brighten. So for the most part of this, like I said, I am going to try to do my makeup the way I normally do it because I do want to give this a fair chance, but I do feel like the coverage on this concealer is not as good as some of the other concealers that I wear regularly. And maybe it's not supposed to be, maybe it's supposed to be a medium and Instead of a full coverage, maybe it's the shade. I'm not loving how this looks to start off with. Like, I feel like I still need more. But then also, maybe I need a different shade. So, this just feels like it's kind of looking... I don't know. I, I don't know. I feel like something's missing, but I don't know what. I am going to set this, like I said... Because I always set my concealer and I want to do this the same as I normally do to make sure it has a fair chance of me actually liking it. So this is what we have so far. Y'all, I think this looks good. I still am not 100% sure about this concealer. Like, I feel like you can still see my hollows there. That's a little disappointing. But this foundation... My face like I don't feel like it looks it's matte but it doesn't feel tight it doesn't feel crunchy like any of that normal stuff I don't like this concealer <laughs> I don't like it it's not enough I don't know what is happening and with the shade being what it is it's not something that I would wear by itself so I don't know maybe the formula is good but just as far as coverage I don't like it next we're gonna move on to bronzer Yes, I have this Anastasia Beverly Hills Cream Bronzer. I have wanted to try this for so long and I finally picked it up. I either got it from Ulta on sale or I know um, the Ipsy box, not Ipsy. Yeah, Ipsy Mega Drop Shop, whatever they had it for a while. I picked mine up in the shade Deep Tan and I have only swatched this. I have not used it yet. Oh, that's picking up a lot. Ooh, let's start with the forehead. <laughs> So we can, oh, that's dark. Okay. 
You can always darken up the forehead. It feels like this formula to say it's a cream feels pretty dry. I feel like I could see it when I first put it down, but now, okay, let's go to the cheeks. Okay, I see it. It's not bronze, it's like a contour shade on me, for sure. Which I'm not mad about, but I don't know why I thought it was gonna be a little more red. Can you guys see that? I feel like I can see it. It's not crazy, that's, <laughs> that's probably what it is, because y'all know sometimes I go a little ham picking a contour shade and it is super dark versus something that is actually my shade so i think this looks good for blush i have this patrick ta major headlines double take cream and powder blush this is one of the newer shades i picked this up from sephora god knows when i'm sure y'all saw the haul by now <laughs> maybe probably not I know y'all are probably wondering what I'm doing. If you have been watching lately, some of my content is still from the end of last year. And I know it sounds crazy, but like when I'm in a bind for time, I will edit the stuff that's the fastest to edit, which is usually hauls. So that's why you'll see like a bunch of hauls back to back. Um, but also just if I have like a brand who reaches out, usually a wig company to work with me, this is what she looks like. So we're just gonna apply that while I'm running my mouth. Then those take priority over my other ones. So I'm trying to get caught up on all of my old content, get that out and then only new stuff from here on out, but I still have some stuff. So this I believe was one of the first cream and powder duos that came out that said you can do the powder first and then the cream on top if you wanted to give it a not so matte look. So we're gonna start with just the powder. We're gonna start with the powder then go over it with the cream just because I do not want this to look super duper matte because my face is already super duper matte. Honestly, I probably if I wasn't doing a first impressions of this, which I know I love this, I have another shade. Um, but if I wasn't doing a first impressions of this, I probably would have just used the cream to be honest, but love that shade. It's like a terracotta. Y'all know how I am about shades like that. And then we're gonna take the other side of the brush and then just lightly go over that to help get the powder pressed in and also is that looking, I'm having trouble seeing in my monitor. I feel like it's looking a little gray. I think it's just because I want some more chisel. We're gonna keep going and then by the end, if I still don't like it, I'm gonna put some more. For highlighter, oh, I haven't used this yet. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Spotlight Liquid easy highlighter this is one of her light wands i forgot i had a blush too but we're going to use that in another video i'm going to try this with a brush first versus just putting this on my skin because i don't oops that feels like a lot yep that's a lot now that is pretty oh that is so pretty that literally looks like a lip from within. I was a little nervous, but yeah, she's cute. I'm just tripping over my forehead. I feel like my forehead usually looks crazy by now and it is not, so no primer, just foundation. I do feel like I want a little more sculpt, so I'm gonna take this Makeup Forever Artist Sculpt Powder in the shade S450. I remember this being super dark. It is in Strong Ebony, I think is the, yeah. So <laughs> we're gonna go in with a super light tap and just dust this back here. Yes, that is what I wanted. This is super dark though. Like you do not need, I, this, I see, 
I thought this was one of those shades that was not, it looks darker on their website than it does in real life. No, it looks like exactly what it looks like. So I'm just concentrating this back here to give me a little more sculpt in the hollow. Yeah, we like that. We like that a lot better. All right, I went ahead and did my brows off camera. I don't have any new brow products. I'm going to try this one size matte eye popper. It's a smoothing creamy eyeshadow in the shade Open To All. I found this at TJ Maxx for $7. And I honestly thought this shade was so pretty. I was like, I will wear this as a lip color, but we're gonna do what you're supposed to do with it to start. And I'm gonna take a little bit, I have no idea how to use these. Like, I feel like this is just the prettiest terracotta, y'all know me in this shade. Like, I don't use it on my eyes normally. I don't know how to do this. I think this is how you use it. I mean, there's no right or wrong way, right? I'm just gonna put this all over the eye. I bought this cause I thought it would be a really pretty transition shade which it is so that's what that looks like if you wanted to do could you just do i would still put something on my lid this is not my norm of just putting like a shade one shade and going but if you just want something for a little bit of color to tie everything together i think that's a really pretty shade i do have this nomad air eyeshadow palette i remember being intrigued by this because the shades in it are just very Neutral, user-friendly, like I thought this would be a really pretty travel palette. We're going to start off with Up, Up, and Away and see if this does, yeah, it did make that darker, which I'm kind of surprised um, because it looks like a light shade in the pan, but it is doing exactly what I wanted, giving some depth without having to go in the super darkest shade. I really, really want to try this shade here. I don't want to go with this one. It's too light. I need to wet my brush. No fallout, please. I don't want it to be too opaque. This is exactly what I want. More like a light little wash of shimmer on the lid. Or I'm going to take a little bit of this darkest shade, Fly the Skies. Yeah, that's what I was thinking it would do that almost looks black i just want a little bit in the outer corner i barely dipped my brush into that yeah just to deepen it up a little bit and then i'm gonna take a little bit of that darker shade and put it on the lower lash line. Okay, lips. I also have a one size. This is the Lip Snatcher Precision Lip Filler Pencil in Code Word. I don't know why I feel like I remember this being kind of a burgundy. Or is it a brown? She's a little burgundy, but I think we can make it work. I will say this is a... Take your time. A very creamy formula but we all know I do not like pencils you have to sharpen I don't travel with these I need something retractable so I don't have to bring something with me this is the makeup forever rouge artist forever matte this is their liquid lipstick in the shade 192 toffee at all house all hours Oh, let me make y'all laugh. So <laughs> your girl had to get some bifocals and I was feeling some type of way about it, but I wear contacts and then I noticed when I'm reading stuff, I'm doing this little number and I used to laugh at my daddy when he would do that. But yeah, that's me now. This shade I think is going to be perfect. So it'll help balance that out a little bit. But why is this looking orange? Oh, this formula feels so good. It's not a mousse, but it almost kind of feels like one. 
That is pretty. I feel like I need more brown on my lip, but that's just because that's what I'm used to. Yeah, we need some brown. I'm just going over this with my Charlotte Tilbury. I just need a little more definition. This is in the Lip Cheat shade Pillow Talk 3. I went ahead and I did my mascara and my liner. I just did a little tiny baby wing because again, the focus is on the face today. Even though I wanted to try out some of the other products I hadn't tried yet. Y'all, I feel like my face looks so good. I feel like a lot of people were kind of on the fence about this foundation because of the fact that so many people were reviewing it and it was all sponsored. This is not sponsored. This is my own money. And I can tell you right now, like this just feels like I don't have anything on my skin. It feels so good, so lightweight, but this coverage and I feel like it balanced out, like everything looks good. So I'm gonna film some more videos, but we're gonna check in throughout the day, see how it looks, see how it's wearing. I'm gonna be in the house, I'm probably gonna cook. So at least I'll have some kind of heat or something going on around, I ain't going outside, it's hot. <laughs> we are not doing that, but this is our starting point. I think it looks good. Probably gonna put some gloss on because even though this feels lightweight, my face feels very tight. Let me do this Makeup by Mario gloss. I said my face, my lips, and that just gave that more of a gold, but I think it all goes together. So this is our starting point. Comment, tell me what you think, and I will come back and check in throughout the day. I'll probably do some on my phone too, just so you can see like not in front of the camera and the lights. So I just wanted to do a quick update. It's about two hours in with the foundation. I am still currently in front of my beauty lights. So I just wanna give you guys a close up of what my skin looks like. Of course I have texture, it's skin. Nobody's skin is flawless, but I feel like my forehead looks so good. So this is where we're starting or two hours in, but y'all, I think this foundation looks so good and it's not settling into my lines. I'm about to go cook, so I'm gonna get a little steam and stuff going on to see how this holds up. We're gonna see. I don't have anything on my chin. Okay, so transfer crease proof is a lie, but Maybe, where else can I check? I have something else on my forehead. This is the only area where I only have foundation. This is not, it's not transfer, it's not budge proof. I have not sprayed it, I have not put any primer, I have not done anything else, but even though some came off, like it doesn't look patchy on my face at all. So I will check back in later. <laughs> I know I just gave y'all a checkup, but I want to give another one in front of a window. So this is natural light. This is my front facing camera and I still think this looks so good. All right, I am not sure how this is gonna come out. I'm trying to use my back camera so you can see what it looks like in front of natural light, in front of a window downstairs. So we are four hours in and this makeup still looks as good as it did when I applied it. So I already got backups coming. All right, so we are at check-in number one with the camera and my lights. I've already shown you guys what this looks like in front of natural light with my camera from my phone. I did front facing and back facing so you could see the detail, but this is what it is looking like. I'm trying to decide, this is definitely not transfer proof. Like I have this little sponge right here. If I touch, I don't know if you guys can even see that, but it definitely has some of the foundation on it. But even with that, like it doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel wet. Like. I'm trying to decide if I feel like my texture is better or worse. I do have a few little spots where it looks like I'm, I have a little more texture than normal, but I just feel like 
the telltale for me is always this forehead and it still looks good. I've had some foundations that look way worse than this. I've cooked, it's like 77 in my house right now. So sweated a little bit, but not like running down my face. So this is where we are, 351. And I still think it looks good. So I'm gonna check back in later. All right guys, so this is my final check-in. It is currently almost 9 p.m., which means I'm tired. I have had enough and I'm ready to get ready for bed and take this off my face. I will say that I do still feel like it feels really light on my face, like I don't have anything. But as you can see, your girl is oily. Now considering I have put no primer, the only part I set with powder was the middle of my forehead under eye and chin. I put powder here, but you can still kind of see the oil coming through a little bit. So I just want to see what happens when I blot. We know this is not transfer proof, but even still like, I don't even know if you guys can see that is not a lot coming off. Like it is still holding up well. I don't feel like it's broken up anywhere. Like to be able to blot my face like that and still have all this coverage is just wild to me. And I mean, yeah, you can see there is stuff coming off. So all this mask proof, transfer proof, I don't know where that's coming from, but maybe it's just like it won't come completely off your face. Like this still looks good. I cooked, got a little overheated. I didn't really sweat in it though. I'm gonna probably wear this to the gym tomorrow. I don't know how I can get it to not be so full coverage because I don't need it this much. But like I said, I already have a backup of that shade coming in. And then I'm picking up one of the lighter shades because I do feel like when I start looking oily, it kind of oxidized some. But I don't know, I still feel like it looks good. I don't know, y'all. I don't know what is in that foundation, but I love it. Unsponsored, my own money spent three times over now because I'm buying three of them. Tell me what you think about it. Would you try it? Do you think it still looks good? What do you think about the shade match? I saw another video that said originally they only had 10 shades and now they have 20 or they only had 20 and now they have 30 something like that so within the past month they've expanded but hopefully they'll expand some more thank you for sticking with me till the end of the video if you're new i hope you decided to join the family by hitting that subscribe button and i will see you guys in my next video bye